So recently I had a rare opportunity to do something amazing. A friend of mine that I work with from time to time, who has various connections in the scuba diving world, called me one Friday afternoon Ready? and told me that there was an opportunity right. to work on a lipboard dive boat that does cage diving with great white sharks at Guadalupe Trying Island off the coast of Mexico. The only catch okay. was that I needed to be on board the following Sunday, so I packed my gear and I headed off for the opportunity of a lifetime. While working aboard the Nautilus Explorer, I was one of three dive masters on board. The Nautilus Explorer is equipped with two submersible cages that are lowered to 40 feet. And my job was to ride on top of the cage and make sure that the cage stayed level, using two ballast tanks on either side of the cage, and to make sure the guests were safe. In an emergency, I was able to bring the cage to the surface if I needed to. Also, um, I was responsible for making sure that everything remained untangled as well. Cage diving is basically blue water diving. That means that you don't have a bottom reference and it feels like you're diving inside a giant blue ball, but as the day progresses, more and more of these mackerel start to show up and they gather underneath the boat. In pelagic environments, anything floating on the surface tends to draw attention and aggregations like this conform. On my first sighting of a white shark, I was looking around and I noticed that the mackerel in the distance began to school in one direction. I looked a little closer and I noticed they were following a great white shark. I was more than a little excited to see my first large red toy shark. Mm. 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 Cage diving is different from the usual scuba diving I normally do. You don't wear fins, a tank, or anything other than your wetsuit and a weight belt. You are supplied from the surface, which allows guests to move more freely about the cage without bumping into each other. The sharks that I saw here uh, seemed to show a particular pattern when investigating their cages. First, they'd start deep, and then they'd approach from below. The sharks would then circle the outside of the cage, sometimes moving in between them, and then they would disappear into the distance, only to reappear from another direction. Their counter shading was very effective, and the sharks could hardly be seen until they moved closer. Visibility was around 100 feet or 30 meters, so the sharks could be seen long before they got close to us. Guadalupe Island is a sheer volcanic island 260 kilometers off the shore of Baja, California, uh, that's dedicated as a Mexican nature preserve. It serves as a pumping site for northern elephant seals, California sea lions, and Guadalupe fur seals. Great white sharks are one of the most famous fish in the ocean, and there's a lot of attention placed on them, but they are difficult to study due to their behavior. Uh, these sharks own the ocean, and they travel very long distances. We know a lot about their behaviors, diet preferences, and things like that, but there's still a lot that's unknown about them. For example, mating behaviors, as far as I'm aware, is still an unknown, although there's some pretty good guesses as to what happens. Satellite tagging data has shown that the sharks have a migration pattern in the Pacific Ocean that goes from Guadalupe Island, a pelagic open ocean site that's between Guadalupe and Hawaii, the scientists call the Shared Offshore Foraging Area, or it's also known as the White Shark Cafe, and then the Hawaiian Islands themselves. They also have a migratory schedule that they follow from year to year. Studies have shown that the individual sharks visit Guadalupe between July and January, with males arriving first, followed by the females. The shark here in this video is a male. The way that you can tell is that male sharks have two tube-like appendages that extend from the pelvic fins called claspers that they use for fertilization. After they stay at Guadalupe Island, uh, which seems to be influenced by the amount of food that's available at the island as the seals and sea lions begin to leave, uh, the sharks will then migrate to the pelagic zone. Here, the sharks frequently dive to depths greater than 900 meters, and it's thought that they could be feeding on squid, swordfish, other sharks during this portion of their migration. Little is known about this portion of their migration because they're so deep and they're so hard to study. Uh, it's speculated that they mate during this portion of the migration because reddening of the claspers due to mating hasn't been observed during their stay at Guadalupe. It's still a big unknown as far as I know. After hanging out in the open ocean, some of the sharks arrive at Hawaii around November and May during the humpback whale calving period. Then they repeat the cycle, heading back into the pelagic zone and then to Guadalupe in the late summer and fall months. Something else that I think that's really interesting is that there seems to be different populations of white sharks with specific migrations, although they seem to congregate in the same offshore pelagic zone. But the sharks from Central California always return to Central California, while the sharks from Guadalupe Island always return to Guadalupe Island. I fear this is true of other populations of sharks that are found in South Africa, and Farallon Islands, and other places as well. These sharks are amazing animals, and they're very big. Uh, males are smaller than the females, at about 11 to 14 feet long. And as I said before, the males arrive first, and during this time the sharks can be seen showing certain behaviors. One of these is parallel swimming, where they'll swim alongside each other and size each other up, and the smaller shark will usually leave the area. 
Another behavior that they do is called gill puff, where they open their mouths and force water through the gills, puffing them out a bit. The sharks tend to do this as they begin to get a little bit more aggressive. Um, another aggressive behavior is when they flex their pectoral fins downward. Happy sharks swim with their fins pointed outward like an airplane, and when they get aggressive, they begin to flex it inward. Uh, and of course, another way to tell a shark's mood is to observe how it swims. Uh, here, the shark was just cruising along gracefully. When the sharks start turning their heads from side to side, that's usually a signal they're getting uh, a little more agitated. One of the fun things to do while cage diving with sharks is trying to identify new sharks that haven't been identified before. The interface between the white belly and the gray back, and how it transitions and touches various parts of the shark, like the gill flaps, the pectoral fins, the pelvic fins, the caudal fin, um, those are all markers used to identify uh, sharks. Cuts and scars can't be used because the sharks heal very quickly, which is probably a necessity given the violent lives they lead. White sharks are oviviparous, which means that they develop inside their mothers without a direct attachment to the mother. So the nourishment comes from the yolks, even though they're inside the mother. Uh, white sharks also undergo uterine cannibalism before they're born, which basically means that the embryos actually eat each other inside the mother, and the one that survives is the one that is born. The opportunity to spend a few weeks diving with these animals was like winning the lottery. It was a once-in-a-lifetime experience that I'll never forget. Being in the water, staring into the eyes of one of the Earth's most powerful predators, leaves you with a feeling of deep respect for these animals. And it's hard to explain the feeling you have following a dive with a white shark, so I'll let my reaction at the time speak for itself. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> Certainly around both of those. Oh my gosh! They're here, yeah! They're here, All right, right up to the cage. No? Oh yeah, no? now, no? yeah, they're here. Let's bring them up. Here, listen, look. <laughs>